Hello, my name is Brandon Essienor, kinesiology major at the University of Texas at Arlington. Today I'm going to be going through a vinegar titrations lab with you. If you've made it this far, I want to congratulate you because this is one of the labs that's later on and that means that you're passing so far. So congratulations. The objective of this lab is going to be to find out the acetic acid concentration in vinegar, which is usually around 5%. The first part of this experiment is going to be cleaning the burette. The first and most important thing you want to do is close your burette. And usually that means that it's going to be in a horizontal position just like that. Next you want to fill your burette up with water. It doesn't really matter exactly how much you fill it up with because you're just cleaning the burette at this point. When you feel you've got your burette filled up to a reasonable um, height, you can take it off the clamp. You can put your thumb on the opening and just basically swirl the burette back and forth. The reason for doing this is because you want the water to hit the entire inner base of the burette so it cleans the entire inside. You can dance with it if you want to. You can do whatever you want to do with it. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> When you feel like you've had enough fun doing all of that, you can reattach it to the clamp. And then you're going to open the clamp, which is going to release the water into the dispensed container. Okay, usually after the water has been dispensed through, there's going to be a little water bubble at the bottom of the burette. But what you want to do is tap the tip of the burette to the edge of the container so that the water bubble does not stay there. So all you have to do is do that maybe once or twice and the water bubble will come out. Part two of the experiment is going to be filling the burette with the sodium hydroxide. You're going to have to create a sodium hydroxide solution which I have already created. Okay, you're going to want to repeat that step about two to three more times. And after the third or fourth time, you're going to want to fill up the burette with the sodium hydroxide to between the zero milliliter mark and the three milliliter mark. Part three of the experiment is going to be standardization of the sodium hydroxide solution. You're going to take your solution of KHP that you prepared, and what you're going to do is add about three to four drops of phenolphthalein to the solution. The reason that you're adding the phenolphthalein to the solution is because it's an indicator and whenever you add the sodium hydroxide, when the solution becomes slightly basic, it's going to start to turn pink, slightly pink. Whenever you put the um, solution of KHP under the burette, you want to make sure that the tip of the burette is centered in the middle of the, the flask. This is an example of what you want your solution to turn out to be. It's a very slight pink color, which means that the solution is very slightly basic and it's going to yield for better results. Now I'm going to take you through how not to do the experiment. You want to start off by releasing the stopcock and it's going to release the sodium hydroxide into the KHP solution. You can tell as it starts, it has a pink color to it. Whenever it gets to this state, you just want to swirl it around and it's going to disappear. You want to continue to do this until the pink color stays in longer than it did before. When you're doing this, you want to take your time because if you go too fast, it could turn a dark pink color at any moment. It's very smart to go drop by drop. You can even let it go and just swirl it around as the solution is dropping in. As you can tell, it's getting closer to reaching that slightly basic color. 
once it gets closer to, to this state, you want to slow down because if you speed up, the next thing you know, your solution is going to be a dark pink. Now, if you look back at the solution that I showed you before, these colors are not close whatsoever. The reason this color turns such a dark pink is because you added too much sodium hydroxide. The final stage of this experiment is the titration of vinegar. I'm not going to be going through this step with you because the step is the same exact thing as you did with the cage bead. The most important thing when you're doing this lab is to take your time. When you rush through things, you're going to end up getting this dark pink solution. When you take your time, you get this light pink solution. Many students like to rush through it and they don't get the right data and they have to continuously do, go through the experiment. But when you take your time, you, can, you only have to go through the experiment once. I hope this video helped you guys and good luck on this experiment when you go to lab. Thanks for watching.